let's talk about Chebyshev's theorem. Here's an example. A sample of size n equals 50 has mean of 28 and standard deviation of 3. Without knowing anything else about the sample, what can be said about the number of observations that lie in the interval from 22 to 34? What can be said about the number of observations that lie outside that interval? Chebyshev's theorem states that at least 1 minus 1 over k squared of the data lie within k standard deviations of the mean. So if we're looking at the interval from 22 to 34, and I know that 28 is my mean, I need to figure out how many standard deviations I have from 28 to 22 or from 28 to 34. How many standard deviations is that? Let's calculate that first. So I can look at, we'll change the color here so things will look a little different, 28 minus 22 is 6. If I divide by my standard deviation, which is 3, I get 2. Let me back up for a second. I have x, my, I have my mean minus an end point over my standard deviation. This is how I figure out what k is if I'm given an interval first. So given an interval, I can calculate the value of k. And sure enough, if I do that, k in this situation is 2. Well, if k is 2, that means 2 standard deviations from 28 to 22 and 2 standard deviations from 28 to 34. Because notice, 34 minus 28 also gets us 6. We get the same value. And the only reason I switched the subtraction here is to make sure that I'm getting a positive value for k. Negative values for k don't make sense. In Chebyshev's, k has to be greater than 1. I can't use 1 in there because 1 doesn't work in the formula. It has to be greater than 1. I could use 1.1, but it has to be greater than 1. So I get k equals 2. I know that between two standard deviations, two standard deviations away from 28, away from my mean, gets me this interval. And even though it's given to us in the book, if I have k, I can plug k in to this formula for Chebyshev, 1 minus 1 over k squared, and I get 1 minus 1 fourth, which is 3 fourths, or 75%. I know 75% of the data will lie in the interval 22 to 34. So the 75% here tells me 75% of the data lies between 22 and 34. Or, since we know the sample size is 50, we can multiply 75% of 50, and we end up with 37.5 values. And this is another one of those possible ambiguous answers in statistics. I would round this down to 37 and say at least 37, oh, and I should put this up here, at least 75%. So I would say at least 37 values are in that interval. I know the book says 38, they round it up. Oh, another small frustration. Um, and again, it's, it's, the different techniques that statistics is not algebra. It is not the case that we have an exact answer. So that's why it's really important to show your reasoning and to show your work so that I'm able to follow it. I'm pretty flexible about your answers because of this ambiguity. I understand how frustrating it can be. Different rules for different things. Um, even, you know, calculating the median two different ways. Um, is, is a little frustrating, but both of them are technically correct. It's just a matter of what do you think should happen, right? We've talked about this before in previous, um, in a previous lesson, but 37 or 38, you know, the, okay, 37 or 38 values at least are in this interval. And then what can be said about the number of observations lying outside the interval? Well, if I have 50 total, 50 minus 
37 is going to give me 13. So we can say at most 13 lie outside. And again, I know the book says at most 12, but that's again coming from the rounding of the 37.5, which way do you round it kind of thing. I like to err on the side of caution, which is why I erred down to 37 instead of up to 38, because I'm saying at least 37. So 38's already included in that. And there you have it. There's an example with using Chebyshev's theorem to find out the percentage or the actual number of data values lying in an interval.